Hello, olive trees. There are three of them right in front of me here. These are the Europa olives. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I went from this to this and ultimately to this in only five months. I'm also going to show you how by exactly the same process, I went from this to this in only four months and I'm going to give you an update on this, the third olive tree in front of me, uh, which I rescued from Aldi only two months ago and it cost me £2.50. And I followed the same process for all three of these olive trees and they're all coming back strong. And I'll show you what that process is in this video. So if you've got an olive tree that you're worried about and you think is struggling, you can consider the points that I'm about to share with you in this olive tree video. So let's get started. Let's talk about what we've done with all three of these olives to bring them back to life, to resurrect them. Well, the first thing I did with these three olives was have a really good look at them. I examined them in detail and what I found was that they were quite dehydrated. And I knew they were dehydrated because the leaves were shriveled up and the pots were really quite light. So that was the first problem. Then I had a look in each case at the root ball. I took them out of their pots and I pared away the soil that they were in and I found the soil to be quite compacted and also dry. But when I examined the roots in a little bit more detail and I uh, chopped a few of the roots off using some secateurs, I found that there was still life in the roots, so all was not lost. And you can easily tell if a root is still alive by cutting across it and looking at the cross section and it's clear that there is still life in there. So I began the process then of repotting these olives. Now I chose terracotta pots. Number one, because I like the look of terracotta with this Mediterranean style of plant. And number two, terracotta is breathable. So it will let some of the water come out. It won't let the roots stay too soggy. Now, the next thing to know about olives is if you think about their native environment, it's kind of parched, arid, uh, infertile soil, quite rocky and stony. But nevertheless, these olives can live for hundreds of years in that soil. So we need to try and emulate those conditions. So I repotted these into compost, but I added up to 50% horticultural grit to the compost. And if you want to buy some horticultural grit, there's a link in the description box below this video. And what that grit does is it breaks up the soil and it gives it a much more open texture. What you have to remember is with most plants is they need oxygen around their roots. And by putting grit into the compost, it breaks it up and it adds oxygen and it also makes it much more free draining. Again, olives love free drained soil. And what I do with my olives is I let them almost dry out between watering them. And you can see here that I always leave a space at the top of each of my pots, which allows me to flood them with water. If you fill your pots right up to the top, the water just runs off. So with olives, I let them almost dry out and that gritty soil helped with that. And then once a week in the summertime, when they've almost dried out, I flood them. I give them a really good soaking. The other thing that helps that water drain away is I always put crocs at the bottom of my pots. Now crocs are bits of broken up terracotta pot and you cover the hole in the bottom of the plant pot. It allows the water through, but it stops the soil from draining through at the same time. So it just helps with that little bit of drainage. So from the roots concern, we've now got gritty soil, which is good for drainage. We've got crocs in the bottom of the pots, which is good for drainage. And we've got terracotta pots, which is good for the aeration of the soil. And you'll also notice that I put a mulch of gravel on top of my pots. And what that does is fourfold. It suppresses weeds. It helps to retain moisture. It looks great. And also it acts as a ballast for the newly planted root ball. So that 
is the olive repotted. But the journey doesn't, doesn't just stop there because the next thing I did with all three of these was give them a radical prune. I pruned them quite brutally. Uh, one of them, in this case, in the middle here, I pruned it back to only one leaf. Again, you can see if there's life in the branches because when you cut across a branch with the secateurs, you can see some green in the cross section. And that indicates that there is still life there. So if you've got living roots and living branches, you know you've got a good chance of having a living plant at the end of the day. And plants are really just systems. Uh, they take up nutrients from the soil, they add it to light, they photosynthesize and they produce green growth at the top. So once you've got those conditions in place and you allow the roots to breathe, you've got a good chance of getting a good healthy plant back. So the one on the right, which I rescued from a garden center, has come back good and strong. And it took about three months for it to start producing new leaf buds. But now after six months, it's looking great. This one in the middle, which I tried to kill, I cut every leaf bar one off uh, when the objective was to see how robust and hardy they are and whether I could actually kill it. It's come back to life, good and strong, as you can see. I apologize for the dog barking. My neighbor's dog is in a kennel just behind me here. Now, going off the treatment of these two olive trees, I transferred that exact same treatment to this one. And again, this was a two pound 50 olive from Aldi that everyone thought was a goner. And if I bring the camera in close now, you can see that this has got six lovely new leaves appearing on it. So it just goes to show that there is life in the old olive yet. And I've got absolutely no doubt that that one will recover just like that one and that one in the fullness of time. Now I will have to repot these because they're in pots eventually. The nutrients in the soil will disappear, but you can prolong the process by adding a top dress of slow release plant food. But ultimately, they will outgrow these pots. So once every two years, I'll repot them. Eventually, I hope this one will go into a garden design feature and be planted in the ground. Now this one here, because uh, it, it's got such tender leaves on it, and because we're in October going into winter, I will take some steps to protect the head of this plant. I'll wrap it with some horticultural fleece. You can see me doing that in my olive tree winter care video. But these two over here, I won't need to do that. These are very hardy plants. I'll just move those to a sheltered position out of the prevailing wind. So there we go. That's how I've rescued and resurrected my olive trees. I know that we get very um, worried about these trees and they're not inexpensive. And I understand that we want them to do well but I think we can all afford to be a little bit more, not aggressive, but assertive with these in our pruning, so long as we've got all those conditions right. Well-drained soil, allowed to dry out, keep them reasonably well-fed through the growing season, prune them back, and hey presto, you end up with lovely, fresh new growth. So there we go, olive tree resurrection, and an update to the process and the, the um, progress of the olive trees which I've showed you in my videos in the past. I hope you've enjoyed that. Got any questions? Please do put them in the comments box below. Don't forget to subscribe, like and hit the notifications bell and I'll see you soon for some more olive tree adventures. Bye for now.